our topic today is going to be uh, implantation failure. Uh, during an IVF process in which an egg with a sperm is combined in the laboratory environment, then before retaining that fertilized eggs into the uterus, a lot of things may happen. We expect usually that a fertilized eggs during IVF should be able to be successful implant into uterine cavity so that pregnancy can be achieved. However, in most of the cases, it may be difficult to, for the eggs per se to implant in the ovarian cavity so that pregnancy can be successful. Today, I'm going to talk about things which we can do to try to increase our chances of implantation. In other words, during the topic of implantation failure, I'll try to stress what we can do as a patient going through this process of IVF, which is very stressful, and try to help you so that you can go through with no problem. The guide will walk you through for your concern that if you are very concerned that the IVF was not successful in the first place, or you're trying to attempt for the second time so that you have to know what are the things which you can do so that you can have a successful IVF or a successful implantation of your embryos. It is important to remember that IVF is not always successful on the first attempt and even in the second attempt, but it's also very important to have hope and to try by all means to become true the process. Now, what are the causes of unsuccessful implantation? Basically, there are three things which are very important for an embryo to implant. The first important thing is what we call the quality of an embryo. The second important thing is the uterine problem or the quality of the endometrial cavity. It's very important as well. And the last also important, which also it's probably will qualify under embryo quality is called chromosomal issues of those eggs and sperm. Lifestyle factors as well play a major role for you to have a successful IVF. Stopping smoking, stopping alcohol, achieving a good IMI or BMI, and also healthy, rich diet also contribute to increase your chances for IVF. Now, how common is failure in implantation? Natural pregnancy where there is no assistant, about 40 to 60% of pregnancy end up in what you call miscarriage, early miscarriage, which is basically implantation failure. Then in IVF, approximately 5% of pregnancy may experience around what we call implantation failure. Nearly in IVF, about 75% of failed attempts in IVF all are due to what we call implantation failure. Therefore, this topic of today is very important, especially when you're going through IVF. What are the indications of failed implantation? The first one is abdominal cramps, nausea, vaginal bleeding, stomach ache, the next one is when around 10 days to 12 days when you do a pregnancy test and it becomes negative. What can we do to prevent implantation failure? As I said, the first important thing is lifestyle change. The second important thing 
is to maintain a healthy weight. Then the third important thing as well is for us to screen for any medical condition which may contribute to implantation failure. That may be uh, medical problems, hypertension, diabetes, endocrine problems, thyroid problems, and so forth. Therefore, it's important that we do a thorough screening before you go for your IVF treatment. What medical treatment is available to prevent you getting implantation failure? It's very important that you have what is called uterine intervention. By that, I mean, if you have failed implantation, it's very important to do what is called endometrial scraping. The second important thing, you can do what is called hysteroscopy and DNC. You can also do endometrial biopsy. And also during that process, you can take biopsy for microscopy culture and sensitivity. In which case, if you've got endometritis, then you get treatment for that. There are also laboratory and procedure technologically which we can use to help you to prevent implantation failure. PGTA, which is a screening of chromosomes, where we look at the quality of the embryos, which give us the, the feedback as far as the sperm and the eggs is concerned, can be used, especially in patients above 35. We can use special media, hyaluronic acid, which can enhance and increase your chances of or the chances of the embryo to grow very well. We can also do what is called, called core cultures, which help as well to get very good embryos. We also have to look at immunological therapies, which may assist patients who have multiple implantation failure. That is mean intravenous immunological, which you call IVIG, intrauterine peripheral blood mononuclear cells, which you call BPMC infusion, intrauterine autologous platelets plasma infusion as well, which you call PRP, or intrauterine human chorionic gonadotropin, which you call ACG. We can also add low molecular weight heparin, some people will call it clexy. We can also add aspirin as well in trying to assist you to achieve your pregnancy in a situation whereby you have multiple or more implantation failure. Treatment enhancing endometrial receptivity is also important because we have also to time the time we transfer your embryos at the time which we call a luteal phase. In that phase, it means the endometrium is ready to accept the embryo or the blastocyst. That is the window of implantation, WOI. That's well, we can do what is called intramural growth hormone, which can assist you as well, so that the, the, the embryo can implant. We can use as well vaginal sedal nephil, but all these are more important to help the endometrial cavity to be receptive to the embryos. Also, we can do a test However, it's not done in the same cycle in which we go and take the biopsy of the endometrium so that we can really know which time is, really, is okay for you to do the embryo transfer. In that, we do an ERA assay.